everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are working on Catch of the Day, and this is page eight. Page eight. Um, we're going to have two flaps, a left and a right, and then we have this pocket that we're going to install here. And I've already made the pocket. We did it once on page one, and um, it while I was actually recording this, um, or when I thought I was recording this, my camera froze, so I didn't actually get this on uh, tape. But if you want to see how this is made, um, go back to page one and um, you'll see how this is made. And I'll talk about it a little bit more when we get to that part. Okay, on the, this is uh, an eight by eight pocket page. <clears throat> on the left hand side, I have to think about this for a second. Yeah, on the left hand side, we're gonna install a four by eight flap and you're gonna score a half inch on the four inch side. All right, and then on the right hand side, we're going to install a four and a half by six, four and a half by six panel. Oops, I need to put my, um, I'm going to center it. So I'm just going to use my ruler real quick to find the center line, which is four. And on this, since it's six inches, it's going to be at three. And I'll just line those two dots up and we will have it centered on the edge here, on the right hand edge. <clears throat> there we go. All right, so that, these are the two main flaps. And then what we're going to do is install this pocket on top of this flap like so. And let me give you a little bit of a contrast. So. Here's the flap and this is gonna get installed sort of towards the, the edge and then there's a pocket here. But we're not gonna install that until we get our designer papers down. And then once we have our designer paper down, we can add this. And then once this is installed, we can put our magnets on the small flap in the back of this pocket to keep everything closed. Now, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I made this pocket, um, but I'm not gonna deconstruct it. So basically what I started with is an eight and a half by eight, eight and a half by eight. So lay it into your scoreboard eight and a half inches across, and then you're gonna score at three and a half. You're gonna fold it in half, and that's what's creating this little pocket. Unfold it, rotate it 45 degrees, score at half inch and seven and a half. And those are gonna give you the flanges that are holding the pocket down. But as you can see, they're not equal. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn it over and on the five inch side, the long side, you're gonna trim the flange off up to the score line. Then what you're gonna wind up with is the two flanges on the short edge of the pocket. And that is how you're gonna make the pocket. And if that's not clear enough, if you go back to page one, I go over it in more detail and I even lay the paper into the scoreboard so you can see um, that we're scoring on the eight and a half inch side, but we're also scoring a half inch on the and a, at a half inch off either side of the eight inch. So it's a little bit confusing to talk about, but when I lay it into the scoreboard, it's pretty obvious. So hopefully that helps, and that is it for page eight. The next time we get together, we will um, start decorating, get this pocket installed, and then um, get our magnets placed. Um, and I can't do that ahead of time since I don't know exactly where the pocket's gonna land, um, it may move around, which would mean I have to adjust the magnet. So uh, for the moment, I'm gonna leave it as is. In addition to these mechanisms, I'm planning on using a matted uh, large ephemera card. This is a four by six ephemera card, and it's going to lay on top of the pocket just like so. So you'd still reach in here to get to the pocket, but I'm gonna center this as a design feature on top of the pocket. And again, I won't do that until um, I've got these other edge flat surfaces decorated, but I went ahead and matted it and I'm sticking it in the pocket to make sure I don't repurpose it somewhere else uh, before I get to the design of page eight. So that's it for now. Next time we sit down together, we'll be decorating. 
Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we're working on Catch of the Day and we are on, let me double check, but I think it's page, page eight. Yes, we're on page eight. Okay, so I've got my papers laid out. Oh my gosh, I forgot to ink this. Sorry about that. Let's get this done real quick. This is gonna be the main mat uh, inside and it's just a solid, solid piece, nothing fancy, which means you can put, you know, really large photos in here or an array whichever you prefer. I always like to preserve, you know, a certain amount of space in the album to do a five by seven if you want to. Um, but you could easily do four, three by th three and a half by three and a half or um, five by seven. Or six by eight. I mean, sorry, I didn't mean six by eight. Uh, four by six. With some embellishment and or a three and a half by three and a half. So you got a couple of options there. Okay. Here we go. Let me make sure. This is directional and uh, it actually isn't going the direction I thought the crab should go sideways since that's the way they walk. But that's not the direction of the paper. So I'm just going to stick with what they had done um, instead of rotating it around. Okay. So that's our main element. And now we're gonna decorate the tops. Okay, so for the large flap, I'm using the solid red piece. Everybody's getting home from work, so Nala has to bark at everybody. <laughs> I apologize. She's so funny. She sits at the top of the stairs so she can watch the front door and just see what's happening or hear what's happening. She can't really see it. The door is closed. But if the mailman comes by or somebody gets home from work, I hear about it. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then the next element is this stripe. And I forgot to tell you. Patterns and solids. Eek, I can't remember where the crabs came from. I think it's from the collection pack, but... I'm not sure. Let me find a little bit left over so I can look at the flip side and figure it out. And this is definitely patterns and solids, and we're going to use the um, strike side. Hmm. That's funny. I can't find. There it is. There's a piece. Patterns and solids. So, no, that's not true. That's the fish. This is from, where's, here it is. Where's all my paper? I think the crabs are from the 8 by 8 collection pack, and I'm trying to figure that out. So I should have been more prepared. I don't see it. It might be a Patterns and Solids. I don't see it in it. It is from the 8x8. I remember trimming it down now. It just came to me. So this is from the 8x8 collection pack. This is Patterns and Solids. This is Patterns and Solids. And all of that's a lot easier to tell you before I glue it down to cardstock. So I'll try to get my act together and do that before I glue it down. Because once I flip it over, I can usually tell by the scale of the image or the color of what's on the reverse side or pattern that uh, makes it really easy for me to tell it apart. It's hard to keep track of when you're pre-cutting everything uh, before you videotape. You just stack it by, pa by page and then you start to lose track of where it actually came from. All right, enough of that. Um, okay, so now we have this pocket that I told you that we needed to set aside. And... It's going to get installed like this. So we're going to come over so that we have an equal border around these three sides and then we're going to glue the three sides. We're not going to solid glue it down so that when you open the flap there's going to be a pocket behind it. But before we do either one of those, let's go ahead and lay down our liner for the pocket and the pocket cover. So 
So this is going to slip right into the pocket. There we go. Man, I don't know what the deal is, but ever since I changed my glue bottle, I can't get the right pressure and I'm just pushing out way too much glue. All right, so that's in. So then the next piece is, this is from the 12 by 12 collection pack. <laughs> yes, it is. Do you hear that question in my voice? <laughs> it is. It's from the 12 by 12 collection pack. It is directional, so look for some of the words. Like right down here, it says figure 19. So I know that is the right side up. Already inked it. Hopefully I didn't put too much glue this time. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to apply this pocket just like so. So it's going to be, oh no. Oh, I put my fish in upside down. Actually, I did everything upside down. Am I doing that right? I did everything upside down. I'm gonna see if I can lift it. I'm gonna take a break. Hey everyone, I'm back. I, I messed up. I had actually put the paper down on um, this pocket as though it was going to get installed this way, so everything was upside down. So I took a break, quickly remade it. I was able to salvage the red piece and rotate it. I couldn't save the fish, so I had to uh, cut a new strip. And because I couldn't save the fish, that meant I couldn't save the pocket. So I had to rebuild that, and then I applied the old piece here. So it's just one of those things, beware of what you're doing. Um, uh, putting down the pocket, which we haven't done yet, but you need to have it in the orientation that it's going to get glued down onto the flap. And that is, this is what I'm calling the large flap. The pocket is going to go on top of it, and the pocket side is on the same side that the large flap is affixed to. So hopefully that's helpful. And you don't make the same mistake I did. And oh my gosh, I just realized I made another mistake. I shouldn't have glued that down because I haven't put a magnet in. But there's no paper on the flip side, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the magnet on the flip side. Oh, it's days like this. It You know, some days I can do eight pages in a day. And days like this, I can't even get one done. <laughs> and I have to walk away from it because my frustration level is just through the roof. And I'm sure everyone watching knows a little bit about that. So that's kind of my day. It's been a little frustrating. Okay, so now that is in right. Um, just gonna burnish it down a little bit because my glue started to dry faster than I wanted. Okay, so this is right. This is gonna go down here. We are only gonna glue three of the four sides. So we're looking for an even border around it. So I'm gonna flip it over toward me and then I can draw that line, flip it over and glue it down. And once we do that, then we can locate the magnet on this side and on that flap. Ideally, the magnet on the small flap would have been on the top side, but because, because I'm having a day, it's gonna go underneath and it'll be fine. Um, I try to limit the number of layers between the two magnets so you get good adherence, but it doesn't always work that way. Can't let it go because it's in a particular spot. Okay, so now we're just going to rotate it again. Verify that it's in the right direction. My fish are going the right way. And this is where it's going to go right about here and again I'm looking for an even border around these three sides 
And that looks pretty good. I'm gonna use my Tim Holtz ruler real quick and just see if I'm getting a straight line. And oops, it was looking good and then I let it go. Looks pretty good. Let's double check. Yep, it is right on. So I'm gonna go ahead and push it into place. And again, we've only got glue on three out of the four sides. Because that's gonna be a little hidden pocket. Okay, now ideally this would not be covered and we'd be adding a magnet here but we can't, so what I'm going to do is add a magnet on this, and then I'm gonna figure out where to put it on that side. And I'll show you how. Okay. That's going to really want to jump to the other magnet on the flip side. We'll see. It's not working. It's too... The magnet on the other side, I think, might be too strong. Okay. That, that should be right. Okay, so what I'm just trying to do is figure out where the right side is on this. Oh, oh by the way, we could have done it the other way just apply the magnet here on this side. That's a better idea. Let's put it on this side. And then since we're not dealing with paper on the other side, now I can take that off. We're gonna remove this and start over. Okay, now, there we go. Just put some tape under that and then close this and it'll be perfect. I did it backwards. There we go. Okay, so Ideally, the magnet would be underneath the stripes, but it still works this way. The nice thing about having it on the flip side is it makes the side nice and smooth. But that is that. And then the last thing is I have this ephemera card, which I've matted with black cardstock, and it's going to get centered on top of the pocket, which means we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna flip it over this way, not side to side, but end over end. And we're going to center it and then we're going to um, put our glue on. Now, in this case, we are going to glue everything below this line. It's not going to be a hidden pocket. It's just a decorative element on top of the pocket. And then once you have your parameters, you can just fill it in with glue. Again, this is the open end of the pocket. And now we're looking to have it centered and have a nice even border all the way around. And that looks good. I just wanna make sure there's no glue interfering with the pocket and there's not. That's that. Okay, so that's all the um, the A sides of uh, I forgot what page we're on. Gosh, I lost my brains. I think it's page it's page eight. Yeah, page eight. So when we get back together in a few minutes after I organize and do some uh, housekeeping, 
we'll be doing the B side. So we're gonna find a little piece to go here to um, cover the back side of this secret pocket. And then we'll cover these two panels. And that's that. Thanks everyone. Whoops, doesn't go that way. It goes that way. Be back soon. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Crate. We're gonna pay, uh, finish page eight. I had to think about that. What page are we on? Page eight. And I think I've got my papers all trimmed out. Yes, I do. So that is what our spread's gonna look like. This is the B side. Oh, it's already inked, good. This will go pretty quick. This um, page has a hidden pocket right here and a pocket on the front. And I haven't um, haven't done my, uh, my inserts yet for the whole album. So I still have that yet to do, but the, the main part of the album will be covered. I think I'm gonna do my inserts offline. Um, they'll be, the size of the insert will be in the cut list, but uh, for the design, um, you're gonna need to refer to the walkthrough. Um, Cause I need to get these videos uploaded as soon as possible and I don't wanna hold up the whole upload to show you an insert. Um, Cause these things can take hours. And I, I feel like I'm behind schedule already. All right, so this one needs to be trimmed. I can see that. So I'm gonna set it aside. Let's get this piece in. So then we can better see, ooh, that doesn't look right. It's not the, it's a little too short. Luckily, we have more. I might even have some that's cut. Um, but that one's a little bit too short. So I'm gonna retrim one. Will this one fit? Yep. Yes, it will. So I'm just going to retrim this real quick. And it looks like two inches is perfect. Two inches across. It's really going to vary depending on how you installed the um, where exactly this piece wound up. So it might have gone to the left or right. So do check it, don't go by two inches. Check it on your installation. There we go, that's much better. Much better. And I didn't have to cut into anything, this happened to be a scrap. So that worked out well. Almost like I planned it. Okay, just make sure it's going the same direction as the crabs on the center page. Remember, this is a pocket, so we'll find something interesting to put in there. For the time being, I'm just going to slip that in there so I don't forget about it. Okay, now this one needs to be trimmed down, and I added this because it just makes it easier for me to see my boundaries when I go to cut it. Now, either I cut this crooked the first time, or there's some issue with the panel, but it doesn't really matter. I'm going to straighten it up visually. even if it's not a perfect um, right angle at the corners. Let's see. Yep, that did it. So basically I wound up cutting it a di diagonal, cutting a little more off this end and less off this end uh, to make it fit perfectly. It could be, actually I can see it now, this piece did not go in perfectly straight. And so visually, I had to straighten it up by cutting this at a slight diagonal, very slight. 
but it was also too wide because it was going to get stuck in the hinge. So I had to trim it no matter what. put it in all that talk I put it in upside down opposite of how I trimmed it I think let's see because it's a slight diagonal it has to go in the way I cut it or you don't get the benefit of it yeah I put it in upside down I think hmm. maybe not something's not right That's one good thing about the glue drying fast is I can redo it quickly as long as I get it off. Okay, that's, that is the right way. One more time. Okay, so we are gonna have an insert here, and I think I knocked it out. I'm just gonna put this in here for safekeeping to remind me I have to do an insert. And then we also need to put an insert in here. So I'll go over those. Uh, the dimensions will be in the cut list, and you'll have to see the um, the walkthrough for what, what I actually wind up putting into the pocket. So. Um, with that said, that means I can actually go start uploading page eight and then get some of those details done offline and get this released to you guys sooner rather than later. Okay, uh, next time we get together, we'll be doing uh, the cover.